Welcome everyone to the Hit and Run Candlesticks Public E-Learning. Today's date is October 30, 2018, and this is Rick on the mic. Hey Mike, how are you? Not, ho oh, ho, great profits Mike. Way to go. Way to go. All right. Um, hey, I'll, again, thank you everybody for being here. This is a might be a full evening. I don't know. I've got a lot of stuff to do here. Um, one thing I want to do, and I'm going to get this out of the way uh, right away, and uh, I want to thank all those that left comments on my YouTube um, channel, and I had said that uh, we would pick some winners for some free memberships. And what I'm going to do here is we're going to do that live, and I'm going to um, um, I'm going to give three, I better, I better write this down. I? I'm going to three monthly memberships away and two quarterlies. So there's five in total, five in total. Well, Steve, you can have one. <laughs> the only rule is you have to go to the YouTube channel and you have to to leave a comment you can ask a question and I've spent most of the day answering uh, those questions JP is saying uh, that he missed it not to worry I am going to do this again next month so um, you know when you visit my YouTube channel uh, leave a comment if you like the YouTube give it a thumbs up make sure you subscribe so that you are alerted right away um, when um, when there's a new YouTube video out there. For instance, tonight's recording, tonight's recording will be on YouTube and the website, YouTube and the website, and all you have to do is go to the recording, uh, and, and, and I'll kind of show you a little bit here, uh, in a little bit here on that, and we'll draw for, uh, those memberships. So here's what I want to cover tonight. Uh, we're going to do the giveaways in just a second. Hang on. And um, I want to talk about a couple of announcements. Uh, I want to remind everybody, the Right Way Options members, this Saturday, yeah, this coming Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern, there is a members webinar, uh, 10 a.m. Eastern, this Saturday. I also want to announce that the Top Gun Day Trading Room is open. Um and it's, it's open to the public still until mm, tomorrow, I guess tomorrow. Tomorrow is the 31st, uh, starting Thursday the 1st. It will be passworded back up, and only members will be allowed to get in. Um, and, uh, of course, if you're interested in uh, right-way options, hit and run candlesticks, or uh, the Top Gun, Top Gun Day Trading Room, uh, we do have that 30-day uh, trial for only 14 bucks. Um, another big announcement that I want to make is um, we have we've been talking about it, and it's finally here. Uh, our 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 own live uh, training alert uh, that we have here. Um, it will be. There's a chance that it will be out to the public Friday, but. To be honest, um, probably next week, uh, we've got to load the scans up in it, uh, but we have a real-time live alert system, uh, and we'll talk a great deal more about that probably next week uh, when those alerts are uh, loaded up in that system. So we'll, we'll keep you uh, up to date on that. I also want to send out a great big congratulations to those in the Road to Wealth program with uh, Tradehawk. Uh, they have done pretty well. Uh, I've gotten some reports back that uh, there's some folks in Walmart and they've made tons of money there. Uh, Twitter was another one that uh, the Road to Wealth group was uh, uh, involved with. Not everybody in there. Like I say, I've, got, I've had reports back from some folks uh, on some of these and that was one there. Uh, Intel is another one. Uh, Intel, those folks are up pretty big on this. So congratulations. 
uh, congratulations on on uh, the Road to Wealth program with Trade Hog. So, thanks for being there. Uh, if you guys have any questions, you know, talk to me, you know, during the day, and we'll see what we can do to help out. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about candlesticks here shortly, and then we're going to try to open the room up. Uh, hopefully, there'll be enough time for that. So, uh, yeah, Steve, the day trading group uses uh, LTA. That's short. Um, uh, for the scanner, live trading alerts is is the uh, name of it. Okay, so let's get right with this. Let's. Uh, I'm kind of excited to do this. I've, this is my first time, so uh, bear with me here. Uh, my, I've I've practiced this, um, but you know, you go live. There's always you, you just never know uh, when you go live. First of all, I want to. Uh, point out a couple of things. This is just, uh, I believe this was last week's YouTube right here. Uh, it's very important that uh, when, if you go look at a, a, a YouTube video, keep in mind that only a paragraph or two is shown in the uh, text area. Um, but if you go down here and you click on uh, show more, it opens up more of that text right in here. And you can see uh, different things that we have in here um, that you, that's linked right to those things. Uh, for instance, if you wanted the 30-day trial, you could link right to it. Uh, free candlestick ebook, and I will tell you that I was kind of hoping it would be ready, uh, but it's not. Uh, I have a new updated candlestick ebook coming out that I will make sure everybody gets, uh, especially those uh, that have used this link right here. And download this one. I guarantee you will get the new one as soon as it comes out. It's free. Uh, if you want to get to our free trading alerts, you can get here and sign up into that. And, of course, don't forget about our smartphone. This is the Apple link and the Android. And if you ever want to see uh, my uh, Road to Wealth trading account, you can simply click on this link here. Uh, down here and you it will take you directly to my live trading account uh, where I actually show uh, the front cover of uh, of uh, that account so all right let's do this this is going to be kind of fun like I say I've never done this before so we'll, we'll try it for the first time so what I'm going to do is uh, the rules were the first three videos so it's this one this one and this one if you leave a comment in there you're eligible and there's this really cool program uh, called uh, uh, TubeBuddy here. And what I'm going to do is start right there. And I'm going to go over here and pick a winner. And it picks a winner at random um, for those that have left a comment. It's the only way that it picks it. Uh, and the first one we're going to pick is um, let's do a month. Let me write this down. Month. So let's pick that winner and see what happens here. Uh, pick a winner. Uh, somebody that goes by claim adjuster, and what I'm going to do is snag this real quick. So I have this, and I will send them a note uh, tomorrow. There you go. There's one, one done. And we're going to close this. And now let's come down to the second one here. We're going to pick another month. Let me write this down, claim adjuster. Thank you for um, working with me on this. And by the way, if anyone here is picked, please shout out, okay? Um, so here, let's do another one. We're going to pick that winner. Oh, here, I guess. For another uh, monthly trial. And Alfred, Alfred, let me, I'm going to, just snag that so I have it permanently. There we go. So snag that. Now let's shake it up a little bit. We're going to do one of the quarterly ones. So Alfred. <laughs> I wish this was 1.6 million mega uh, drawing here. This is for a quarterly. Uh-oh. There we go. Well... There we are. Pick a winner. This is for one of the quarterly memberships, and this goes out to 
uh, what is that? Uh, dub does, I'm not even going to try. How's that? So we're going to snag that real quick. There we go. And so that was a quarterly. And now what we're going to do, let's do another quarterly and let's move up to the very first one. We're going to do that one. And there it is. Pick that winner. Uh, Michael Williams. Michael Williams. So I'm going to snag that. And that is a quarterly winner. So congratulations to Michael Williams. Quarterly. Michael. And the last one we're going to do is another monthly. Uh, and... Uh, we're going to, let's go this one right here, another monthly. Uh, pick a winner. There we go. Oh, Sully, is that you? Congratulations. What I'll do is, uh, I probably won't have time tonight. Um, what I'll do is tomorrow morning, I'll send you an email and I'll show you how to get squared away and set up. Congratulations. And then the last weekly is going to be, or weekly, monthly monthly membership will be uh, JGC Inc. Let's write that down. Monthly JGC Inc. Okay. Cool. All right. Jo hey, way to go, Joanne. And here's what I'm going to do for, for members. This is good for everybody. So if you are a current paid member of Hit and Run Candlesticks, what I will do is I will extend your membership. So what's going to happen is uh, you'll get your time, uh, whether it's a quarterly or monthly, uh, but your billing, you know, your, your billing will be prolonged. It will be, be out there uh, until it's time again. So, and of course, if you're brand new and you've never been there, your monthly, I'll get you hooked up and set up tomorrow so that everything is going great. Now, for anyone that would like to be set up for next month, I'm going to do the same thing. I don't know if I'm going to give five away, but uh, we're going to do something, that's for sure. Uh, we also, you know, I may do some scanner stuff uh, to give away, and who knows. But the, what you want to do is go to the uh, YouTube video that you're looking at. Make sure that you leave a comment in the comment section down here. And I, I have worked very hard to um, try to answer the majority of those today. I still have a few more. There were quite a few. Uh, and there's still some up here that I haven't uh, gotten to this evening. So, uh, you know, if you do that, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And, um, well, who knows? You might be a winner. Anyway, thank you so much. I'm glad there were some winners here. Uh, that is so cool. I'm, like, pumped. <laughs> That is so cool. So we're definitely going to do this next month. Uh, so please make sure you go in there and you hit that, uh, those comments. And, you know, if you like the video, let me know. Also, too, don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to um, make suggestions as well. We're always open here uh, for suggestions. So keep in mind that my good friend Doug Campbell, Right Way Options, has a YouTube channel. Uh, Steve with Top Gun uh, day trading has a YouTube as well. So please go check their YouTube, uh, stations out, channels out, and, uh, you, you'll find some great education there. So thank you very much. Thanks flash. Okay. Let's get started here. Um, the next thing I want to look at is, um, oh yeah, here's one thing I want to do. If you're, if, if this is the first time you've heard of it or anything, uh, there's a link right there that will get you subscribed to my YouTube channel. Doug put his YouTube out. So, you know, we, we are very different on our YouTube channel. So subscribing to one does not subscribe you to the other. So please go in there and uh, subscribe to those uh, so you can be alerted. There you go. Steve just put his out. Uh, Steve put his channel out there uh, for the YouTube. So uh, once again, we do not... Um, I have nothing to do with the Right Way Options YouTube channel. I have nothing to do with the Top Gun Trading YouTube channel. 
Uh, we are very separate there, so please don't think r subscribing to one gets you to the other. All righty? Okay. All right, let's, okay, let's settle down here. Um, yeah, let's settle down here and let's talk about what we want to talk about tonight. So that took about 15 minutes. I'll make a note of that. Um, a couple of things that I want to talk about uh, is candlesticks. And I've got four questions that I would, I would like to answer if I could. Um, th these, are, th these are my opinions. Um, I have studied candlesticks for 31 years now. Well, I take that back. Uh, I'll say 30 years. I've been trading for 31 years. Uh, but it was probably, I had candlesticks on the charts when I first started. But um, I really didn't know what I was doing. Uh, I really didn't. And, and uh, it took some time, uh, lots of help from lots of people. Uh, lots of studying, lots of looking at charts. I man, whew, um, thousands, good grief, thousands of charts I've looked at with candlesticks on there. And uh, there, I think there's four questions that that I would like to try to answer uh, tonight, if I can. And again, it's it's my personal opinion based on my personal trading, um, and um, the the way I follow price action. One thing you're going to find, and I don't know if it's going to come out tonight. Uh, it will, it comes out a lot of other times. I, I really don't know where this evening's going to go, uh, as far as conversation goes, but one thing you'll find about me is every book I have bought on candlesticks. I've read each and every one more than once. And believe me, I have a lot of them. Um, my pages are rad, rag tagged. My I've got notes in them. Uh, I've got sticky notes in them. And I think every one of them are good. I truly do. And for the most part, when it comes down to it, I think it's important that each individual takes the basics of what they learn out of the books because that's all the books are. I am not trying to diminish any book at all. I, in fact, I, I strongly support any candlestick books out there. And I do not have one. I'm not trying to peddle a candlestick book. I do not have one. Uh, I have some favorites. Um, and we're not going to really talk about that tonight necessarily, but um, when you open, when you crack a candlestick book open and you start looking at it, it is basic stuff. It is not any kind of, of crazy, you know, reach out there. It's not anything fancy. It's not, it's just basics. Talks about a simple bullish engulf. Talks about a simple morning star signal. That's about it. And again, I am not trying to belittle those books at all. I'm not trying to make less of them. I, I, I absolutely support the folks that, that buy those books or create those books. But I think what ha has to happen is each individual trader has to read between the lines. I think you have to understand what the candlestick and candlestick pattern is telling you. And what it is, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a, a sight into price action. That's what it is. Uh, and, uh, so anyway, let me, let me do this. I'm going to ask the first question question here. And, uh, candlestick signals don't work every single time. Anyone ever notice that? Um, you know, if you see a bullish engulf, um, may, maybe you may, maybe you make money on it. Maybe you don't make money on it. Let me see if I can find something here. Uh, let's, let's take this ECL belt hold and, and I'll use a belt hold as an example. Um, not, not, I mean, how many people have, have seen a belt hold here and, uh, price pops up like this, uh, maybe, maybe price pops up like that and you go ahead and you buy it. 
because it's a belt hold. Oh my gosh. Uh, it's a belt hold. Uh, lordy, lordy. I mean, this to me, in my opinion, is probably the best candlestick signal uh, out there. And yes, over a, a, bull, or a uh, bull kicker. I think a belt hold. But again, it's my opinion. Um, and really when it comes down to it, it's, it's how you trade it. Uh, all candlestick signals are good for what they tell you, but it's how you trade it. It's not that anyone is going to make you money and the other one is not. Because take this belt hold, that's great. But how many people have, have bought into this just, just for this to happen? And, and then what happens is you get stopped out. You get stopped out. And I'm just, you know, putting lines up there. You get stopped out. And now all of a sudden, uh, belt holds, they're not worth the paper they're written on. Why is it so good? It doesn't work. Why are candlesticks even looked at? Why? They don't work. Uh, I disagree with that. I think they work fantastic. It's what, how we read them. And I think over time, traders get a little uh, lazy. Uh, I can say that because I'm probably the laziest one of all. And uh, they, don't, they don't study the charts. And they don't understand what candlesticks really, really do. So remember that reversal patterns, and this is, this is a reversal pattern. And for that matter, all candlestick signals uh, on support at a bottom, you can call a reversal pattern. But remember what, you, re, what, remember what, what reversal patterns are, or maybe what they're not. And reversal patterns are more of a clue of what could come rather than what is, okay? It's more of a clue of what could come rather than what it is. So this belt hold is a clue. This is not the reversal signal. See, that's one thing we get kind of tied up into. Think of, think of the pattern here. What has to happen for this to work? We've got to have follow through. You have to have follow through. But what happens is we rush in, we get in a hurry. Why? Because we want to pick the bottom. Secretly, secretly, we all want to pick the bottom. Don't anyone deny it. Please don't. Because secretly, we all want the bottoms. We all want the very, very best price. But what we have to understand, this reversal pattern, this reversal signal, if we wait for the pattern to develop, to prove, over this area here, and it, it, you know, moves up. Man, I got, I need to probably clean some of that up. There we go. Uh, let's put this up here. So we start, we start moving up over this level here, up over this top. And then, then we might have something when we have a test or over that area right there. We're not going to talk about the testing and all that different, different class. Uh, so what we want to wait for is that follow through. And when that happens, then we have the reversal pattern. So this, this is nothing more than a clue. That's all it is. It's a clue that's telling us, hey, you know what? We better pay attention to this chart. We better pay attention to this chart because this is a pretty powerful candlestick. And we've got some pretty good volume to back it up today. So when it, when it finishes, when it finishes the pattern, then it's tradable. So um, when you see this pullback right here, that is not failing right here. Because what, what, what you may see, let me roll this over a little bit. And let's get some of this back out there. So we have, there we go. We have a pullback, right? Oh, it failed. It's junk. It's no good. Not true. When we see the rest of the chart pattern, rest, just darn it. All right, click the wrong tool here. There we go. When we see the rest of the chart pattern, that bullishness, 
and we start moving above that very first candle, I mean, it depends on the on how these candles are, are set up. It could be the first two candles. That's your clue to start looking. When it breaks out over, over the belt hold candle, that's the time to take it serious. Now, here's the trade that we might be looking for. Break out and then look for an, I, like, I just like to look for an inside day. Uh, it's another way of saying a test. So we have the breakout and inside day. That area right in there becomes the buy area right there. And this is your pattern. So this is the clue. This is building the pattern. And that is the reason to go long. So if you think of this as conditions, condition in this case is the, is the belt hold. Part of the condition is a pullback and then Pull, the, part of the condition is a breakout and clearing the belt hold candle. So uh, here's what I see from, from a lot of folks is they rush into a bullish engulf, a, a Hiromi, a piercing candle, thinking they're catching the bottom. And they very well might be. I, I'm not saying they're not. They very well might be. But what happens is if it doesn't work out right away, it pulls back, and most signals do. Most of the time, it does, unless it's something news-driven that has several days of positive news. So what happens is you get the belt hold, you buy it because you just aced a belt hold, it pulls back, you get stopped out, boom, you lose money, you're done, it gets a bullish candle in here, it moves up. Three weeks later, you go happen to be stumbling across this chart, and you see this thing and it's done something like that and you're dumbfounded, absolutely dumbfounded. What happened? Why didn't it work for me? Because you didn't let the chart pattern finish. You didn't let the chart pattern actually tell you it was a reversal pattern. So, uh, Pradip, Pradip, welcome. Glad to have you here. Um, okay, I've got right here a daily a belt hold. This is, this is something that w w when we look at charts, I'm going to try to make it a point to point this out. Um, we might see a, um, oh, um, a chart pattern, like maybe, maybe a J hook on the daily. But if, uh, if you look at a two day, three day, four day, five day chart, what you might find on that J-hook is a bullish candlestick. And I, this is something I think that, that everyone should do is uh, either, either, you know, manually when you, and I assume everyone looks at a daily chart. It's what I do. Uh, most people that hang around us probably look at daily charts. Um, and, uh, but when you look at that and you're trying to make heads or tails, Go to that two-day, three-day, four-day, five-day chart. Now, in this chart, I mean, we're not looking at that J-hook, so I probably shouldn't even have done that right there. But if you look at the two-day chart, still a belt hold, three-day chart, we start having this long-legged doji here. And let's just go to the weekly because that's what I wrote it on. And the daily is a belt hold. The weekly is a long-legged doji. Now, I don't want you to think that because you'll, you'll see on a few of these I've written some of this stuff down. I don't want you to think that that short-term chart pattern on the daily is always what I'm going to show on the weekly or three-day or two-day, whatever I'm looking at. Um, so, so just keep in mind, it doesn't mean that, that a J-hook today, if you look at a weekly chart, it was a bullish engulf or a morning star. They could be either one uh, on that. But... If, if you take it to a little longer term, you can see in chart patterns, in, in the majority of all chart patterns you look at, short-term chart patterns, like, like the J-hook and ABC move, one, two, three move, uh, continuation type chart patterns, uh, even inverted head and shoulders, a head and shoulder, bearish candles as well, um, cup and handles. If you go to that longer term time frame, you will actually see a candlestick signal Majority of the time, you'll see a candlestick signal that showed you where you should be buying it or 
buying above that candle, you know, buying uh, when that candle follows through. Uh, so, you know, make sure you look at those, those longer time frames. Uh, let's see, there was a question here. Uh, ECL, Mr. Ng. Thanks, John. Uh, Steve, where would you put your stop on ECL? Well, you know what, John? Thank you for the question. But here's, here's something you and, and all traders must understand. It's not quite as, as mechanical as that may seem. Um, first of all, where you put your stop? Down there. That's the pivot low. But, I mean, what kind of crazy man is going to buy it here and put their stop way down here? Uh, that, that would be a crazy man. So, it's, it's not a simple answer. If, if you want to put it halfway down, you certainly can. Uh, if you want to use these lows right in here because these are acting as support, you certainly can. But I think what it comes down to it is making a plan. Making a plan. Also, if you're looking at this as being uh, your stop, yeah, I have to ask yourself, where are you buying it? Because see, the buy is not till it actually moves over that line right there. And that is resistance right now. Wouldn't you agree? All these touches, that's acting as resistance. So when the bulls finally, whenever they do it, maybe it's tomorrow, maybe it's a week from now, but when they finally break out, they break out of that resistance. Now we can look for an entry up here. Well, if you have an entry up here and we broke out of resistance, and if this is now support, where would your stop be? Wouldn't it be just under that support? So, I mean, you can certainly buy the belt hold today and I mean, personally, that's probably where I would put my stop right in here. Not, it's not halfway. I'm, I would use those two uh, wicks down there. Um, but the reality is this is where, where we want to look to trade. And then this resistance becomes support. And that is where our support would be just, just underneath that slightly. A couple other tools that you might use or tool you might use is a volatility stop. I use that an awfully lot. Uh, I think it's uh, terrific. Uh, another thing that I use a lot is my T-line band, uh, T-line bands here. Uh, so uh, I might use those. I don't know if I would use those in this particular case, but I would, I would look at those. So uh, let's see. Um, oh, and, and TX, I wasn't saying you were, I was just pointing out that it's just not, uh, is, oh, wait a minute. That's different, different question here. Uh, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll get to a little later on. If you want to look at charts, we can certainly do that. Uh, we can certainly, do, we can certainly do that. Um, uh, let's look at IPG on the daily chart. You see this big run right here. See that big run. Look at the weekly chart, big bullish in golf, big bullish in golf. What, what do we know happens on a bullish in golf where, you know, and this is a case where we might look in some cases, you might look about that halfway mark. In this particular case, you could use that halfway mark. I would prefer to use where all the candles are, where the price action is. So let it move down. And this is a case where I would use those T line bands. So we broke out of those T-line bands on the weekly. We pop back. We're actually right here inside with a tail down here, a little hammer. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this and say, hey, this is pretty bullish here over that green line right there. And now go look at the daily. And that's what I would look at. And that puts us, because we had that hammer in there, it, it started to kick us up a little bit. So now that puts us up in this area right here. And what do we know about charts? Well, if you go to trading school, the very first day in trading school, I think what should be taught, one of the things that should be taught is that without this chart pattern, you don't buy. Simple as that. A low to a high to a higher low to a higher high right there. 
I, now, I can't predict that's going to be the high. I'm just making that up right now. But that's where this chart becomes a bullish trade. So I'm, I might look at this chart and say, I'm bullish on the chart. I'm bullish on the chart, but I may not be bullish on the buying of it at this moment. So I want to see this right here. And here's another case that I see that people just, they get destroyed and they can't figure out why. They get destroyed because they'll buy that right there or they'll buy these lows. Oh man, you know, hit support. Uh, I'm going to buy it. I mean, look at that move. And look, I'm not saying this is not going to work out. That's not what I'm saying. But we have to have rules when we go into a chart. We have to have something we can look at because if... If you don't, what really happens is you just end up buying willy-nilly. And there are no rules out there. And if there are no rules, willy-nilly will bite you in the tail. It will eventually. Ask every trader that has not succeeded. It's because willy-nilly bought them in the tail. So here's what happens is they buy like that. When, they, when, they, when, when, they, when the patience is not there is to wait for that candlestick and the chart pattern to work. So we need at low and a high, a higher low, now buy. Buy when we get across that high point, if that's a high point. And, and today could be that high point. Today could be that high point. So we could see that pullback and now that breakout right there. Now, so what if, what if this happens? What if it doesn't pull back tomorrow? What if it does this? then you know what? We have not created a higher low yet. What if it does this? Then we have not created a higher low yet. Sure, we can say, darn it, I should have entered down here. I should have entered on that almost bullish engulf. I should have, I should have, I should have. Next time I'm going to do that. More than likely next time, that'll be willy-nilly trading. So notice here, we're still moving up. We have not moved back yet. We have not created that higher low. So even if it moves up here, this is what we have. We have to wait for that higher low and that breakout. You want to improve the, the odds of winning a trade? Make sure you look at that because I, I, I see this all the time where somebody will, you know, it'll, it'll here, let's do, it'll pop up. Oh, it, you know, it start, they call that a breakout. They start buying it. And then what happens is it starts that pullback, which at this point is a perfectly normal chart. It pulls back. Well, by now they're stopped out. So you've just lost money. It may not be a lot of money, but you lost money. And then what happens is now this silly thing gets bullish and it starts moving up. And you're sitting there with your hands in your pocket wondering, why doesn't this work? Wall Street's full of baloney. All these people out there trading from their basements and their kitchen table, from, from out on the deck of their, their, their lake house or wherever, they're full of baloney. No, it's the successful ones that have figured this out. Stop doing what doesn't work. Sure, and, and there's always going to be those charts. Always going to be those charts. I should have. Shoulda, woulda, coulda. But for everyone that does that, oh, there will be so many that pull back like this. It will stop you out and then it will turn around and go back up. When all we had to do was simply wait till it became a tradable chart. That's it right there. Okay, sorry, I get to going here and then I forget about the chat. Uh, let's see. Kimberly, uh, with that bell told, a lot of times it becomes a fake out. Uh, but, well, not if. I mean, I'm not sure what you're calling a fake out. Uh, I, I'm not sure what you're calling a fake out. But all chart patterns are going to fail. And all chart patterns are going to win. In other words, just because you have a perfect chart pattern, a perfect candlestick signal, a perfect trend, 
that's no guarantee it's going to work out. No guarantee at all. But if this is a belt hold, what, what says this fails? Well, if it, if it closes back below that, that, in this particular case, I mean, that's exactly it right there. So if it fails there, now I've got to use different color. Now we can, if it starts doing this, would we call this a failure? I wouldn't. This is the making of a chart pattern because what more likely uh, is to happen is something like this right here. And then probably down and now I'm running out of room. I mean, that's what chart patterns are. That is not a failed chart pattern. That is a chart pattern. Remember what the, what the belt, belt hold is. It's just a clue. It's not the candle to buy. It's just the clue. It, it's not a buy here, 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 anywhere in here. But as traders, we go after this stuff. I get that. I'm not discouraging that. Just do it right. What I am saying is if you have a belt hold, when does the belt hold confirm? When it's above the belt hold. Not down here inside the belt hold. Now, now believe me, I, I could buy here. I'm, I'm not trying to discourage buying here. I'm just trying to point out that if, if we buy in here and it continues to move down, we get stopped out. We say belt holes don't work. That's a fail. Now that's a failed belt hold. And see, you've just taught yourself something that is very untrue, but you believe it now. So if we start off on the wrong foot, what happens is we just go on on that same foot. So now you've trained yourself to look at a belt hold as failure when if you go back and look at it a, a few weeks, maybe later, man, this thing might have done something like that. That's not a failure. That's part of the chart pattern. It, it always, whenever I do some coaching and this situation comes up, I, I really, <laughs> I, I've honestly heard people say this right here. Of course, now nobody will say it to me. But I've honestly heard people say, well, it's a belt hold. This is what I expect. Well, you know what? You better get over yourself then if that's, if that's what you expect. You can want that, but you can't expect that because that's unrealistic. That's not what chart patterns do. That's not what candlestick patterns do. It's not what candlestick signals do. So the, the sooner we realize, and, and one of the best things to do is go look at a chart. Go, go, go look at Apple. Uh, I'm going to go to a weekly chart so I can get more of the chart in there. Go look at Apple. And just because I know it's trending and I know it's working, just go look in here. I mean, look where, look where it is right here and look where it is up here. Now, take a hard, serious look at it and tell me that that went straight up. You can't do that. It did not go straight up. Look at all the trials and tribulations it had through here. So that's what we just have to understand is stocks just don't go straight up. And we have to, we have to play the price action game. So I, I wouldn't at all say that the belt holes fail. I mean, they, some do fail, of course. Just remember that don't expect it to make money right away. You might want it to make money, but don't expect it. I think that would be a little helpful there. Let's see here. Um, and I just, okay, thanks, Kimberly. Yeah, but isn't that a pivot point higher low uh, from the previous low? Eric, one thing, please, everybody, if you type me something about a stock, make sure you put the ticker symbol in there, okay? Uh, please, please do that. Uh, but isn't, let's see, and see, I don't know where we're talking about, Eric, and you have to realize that when, and, and this is for everybody. If you type something, I might not see it for 10 minutes later. And I really don't know what we're looking at. I'm going to guess this one right here. I'm going to guess that, um, that, that ECL. So, but isn't that a pivot point, a higher, no, you know what? I think this is what your, your high, higher, low, higher, high. The pivot point would be 
right here. This would be the pivot point right there, that low. So that, that would be the pivot point. Good question, by the way. Thank you. Uh, around October. Well, I, I don't even know if that's the right one. So let's see. JP, uh, do you look at long bodied candles of a candle on a downtrend or uptrend that creates support and resistance and then needs to close? Wow. Uh, JP, that's confusing uh, for me. Everybody else might understand it. Uh, do you look for long, full bodies? If they show up in a chart, yes. Of the candle on the downtrend or uptrend? You, that you're throwing me there a little bit. Maybe if you have a chart, as an example, that creates support and resistance and then needs to close above or below to determine direction. Let's talk about direction for a moment, okay? Let's talk about direction. What direction is this chart, UAA? I'm, I'm not going to wait for an answer. This, this chart, before the gap, was in a downtrend. So all the candlesticks in the world below that line means nothing. Not until that trend changes. Uh, uh, today, it changed. Uh, let's look, look at Fossil. Is this stock in a downtrend or uptrend? If we draw a line right here, it's still in it. Well, it was in a downtrend. It has now broken out. So look, look at, um, let me make this bigger so I know you can see it. There we are. Look at this chart right here. What do we have now? We've got up, 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 up. This chart right here, Wait for the pullback. Trust me, it's going to come. I promise you it will come. It may not be tomorrow. Might not even be this week. But it will come. Wait for the pullback. Wait for that higher low. And this would be a pivot point then. Wait for it to start moving up. The correct place to start looking for this is above that high. Assuming that that is the high. And right here, right here is going to be the pivot point. That's the pivot low. A lot of people put their stops down there. A lot of people. I'm not, this is not, tonight is not about stops. We could talk till this, till the cow jumped over the moon on stops. Uh, but I know a lot of people do that. You might put your stop here. This is support. So maybe your stop just underneath support. Uh, with that bell told, I think the best thing to do is wait until the buyer step in and prove uh, that, that there's support, like does says, all the time. Absolutely right, Kimberly. But you know what? As traders, we don't always follow that rule, do we? And I get it. I, I truly get it. Just go in with that plan and be, half of you can be, say, bullish, but the other half needs to accept the fact you could be wrong. And when you accept that, then you're getting out with small losses instead of big losses. So, uh, JPG, whoops, that's IPG, IPG. This would, this would be the pivot low, correct. Okay, I, I guess that's what you're asking. Is this the pivot low right here? This is the pivot low for what we see right now, but there is not a chart pattern here. There, there just isn't a chart pattern. And here's another thing. Somebody might say, well, sure, there's a chart pattern here. Here, I'll even draw it for you. We'll call that the, we'll draw, we'll call that the uh, handle. And let's call this the uh, scoop. And there we are above the scoop. There's a chart pattern. Uh, we could also call this an inverted head and shoulders. Let's see, do this like this. Right there. Shoulder, head, shoulder. Absolutely. The thing of it is, though, th the problem is that this has pulled back. It's just not easy peasy up. That's not what happens. And that's what I'm trying to point out, that if we wait for things to confirm, because this may be setting up here, but this was an awfully rough move to the downside. Definitely it's up. But if we wait for that chart pattern, now we have 
a, a chart pattern that has proved itself. It's found a low, hammered in that low. It came up and made that high and it tested that low. Again, somebody might argue, well, it's testing right here. The thing of it is, is there, there are several groups of people. There are groups of people that call themselves swing traders, but really they're just itty bitty little day traders because they close things out so soon. And then there's other traders that, that say, well, I'm long this and I'm going to be long. No, you're not. No. And, and I, you know what? I'm 98% I'm positive on this. No, you're not. You're, you're not going to stay in it because what's going to happen, you, you realize that this is the top. You know this. You know that that's resistant. This chart's going to do this right here. And then this chart is going to pull back like this and you're going to tuck tail and run. Just like that. And if, if, if everything would have waited, now you, you certainly may have made money there. But if everything waits, if you're patient, you let that chart pattern develop, now you've got something to fight for. And now you have a solid target. And there you're more likely to get it. That's the way chart patterns work. All bullish chart patterns. I'm sorry, this is supposed to be in candlesticks here. I'm talking about more chart patterns. All charts look that, that look like this, that, that move up like that, they all have this, this little pullback, this pattern set up, that breakout right there, and then we get back into that trend. We stay with that and trend until it gives us a reason to get out. Once we get out, then what happens? That same process starts over. The exact same process, unless it's a total breakdown. So it puts in some bottom, it starts moving up. Uh, I, you know, buyers in here, it moves up here, it starts to break out, buyers here, and then they run that trend until it gives them a reason to get out. But here's what I have found. Most traders that claim, that claim this is where they're buying, most traders chicken out about right here and never, and never let this thing truly fulfill their financial expectations. So, okay, let's, uh, I'm going to run down here. Uh, JP, you're going to have to give me a chart here if you would, okay? If you have a long body candle in respect to other small candles, do you put more weight? Of course I do. Uh, yes, I put more weight in a strong, in a strong candle than I do a smaller candle but it doesn't mean that it's a buy right away. Uh, when it breaks support uh, and when it comes back to retest uh, on the uptrend, it becomes a new resistance level. That is correct. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That is correct. Um, let me go try to find you a, ch 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 a chart like that, uh, what you may be talking about. Uh, I'll, I'll be able to get close. You know, I'm not going to spend an hour looking at this chart. Um, I may be able to get close. All right, let's let's go look at some of these. Look at let's look at that one right there. Uh, nope, I'm gonna I'm gonna be whoops. I'm gonna go to this chart right here. Maybe we'll go back up. And I'm on the weekly. There we go. So there we go. Let's let's go right there. So uh, trend up the pullback. You're asking if I take, if I, if I, if I put more weight in a bigger candle here, a bigger candle and more volume, I would put more weight. But since I don't follow volume very much, I do follow price action. The fact we broke the 50, this is set up in what I call a blue ice failure. It's set up. So this now that, that area, not that blue line to the penny, that area becomes uh, resistance now, uh, right through there. So maybe that's what you're asking, and, and that, that might be one. Look, here, look at this here. Here's ULTA. We've broken below the 50, but we have to look at the chart pattern too. We have to look at the chart pattern. Is that a bearish or bullish chart pattern? And I think what we need is a, a little more information, a little more information on this chart is what we need because I also see uh, possible support right there. Yeah. See there, I also see possible support right there. And there's your big run. 
All this is negotiation between the bulls and the bears. That's all that is. Here's the week. Whoops. There's the weekly chart. Uh, let me get that out of the way. Uh, here, I can get rid of that. Um, here's the weekly chart. For me, this is like a great chart for my watch list. I, I wouldn't be buying it right now. And I'm not saying it's a buy. I am bullish on the chart because it's still a bullish chart. Uh, we have uh, a double bottom here. We have a low, high, double bottom or higher low. They're both the same to me. No one is any better to me than the other. And now we ran up to this high. We've actually created a bullish W pattern there. We've pulled back a little bit. We've done a little testing. And now we've broken out of these highs. This becomes support. I, you guys might not be able to see it. I'll darken it up. You can see it just a little bit better. There we are. The volatility stop is right there. The, to me, this is like a great looking chart for the watch list. And we just have a nice little chart pattern forming. And, and that's on the weekly. If we go to the daily, that would scare most, most people. I mean, I, there was a chart I looked at similar to this today. Somebody was looking at short. Why? And it was all about, well, that candle, yesterday's candle, Friday's candle, I guess, pierce the 50. Well, if that's all you look at, you're going to have a very short career in trading. I'm not talking to you at all, just to everyone. Uh, but if that is all you're looking at, you'll have a very short career in trading. You don't have to look at a lot, but you do have to look at more. So I'm going to move this out of the way here. There, it's close enough. All right. Okay, let's see here. Uh, let's see, Eric, IPG, that was the most amazing. Oh, thank you. Uh, I, I, you're, you're very welcome. Uh, you really are. Thank you so much. Uh, let's see, Daryl, um, do you have an average volume per day criteria uh, for the, the, your scans? Um, yes. Um, yes, I do. Uh, I generally look at uh, charts trading. Um, I, I, well, I have a couple of ways, okay? Uh, prior to, say, a few months ago, uh, I was looking for charts that trade, say, 300, 400,000 shares a day. And it had to be several days back. Uh, and, then, and then maybe, maybe uh, say, 30 days, it had to be good volume. Past that, uh, it could be less volume maybe, but I wanted an average of, say, 250, 300,000 shares traded a day. An average. So... I, I, I'm, and I'm trying to lead up to one thing I want to point out, and I'm actually going to not look at that chart because, well, it's just not a chart. Uh-oh, what happened? Just a minute here. There we go. Whew. Thought it froze up on me. Um, well, let's look at Fossil. I like Fossil. Um, so, um, um, lost my train of thought. Good grief, Rick. It's been a long day. Um, I did lose my train of thought. Everything. Wow. That's embarrassing. Huh. Um, now I'm trying too hard. I, I'm serious. Vo oh, volume. <laughs> Jeepers, creepers. You're right. Thank you. <laughs> I wonder if they make a pill for that. <laughs> um, so... Um, so yes, I, I want to make sure there's volume here, but I also say, say tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning, uh, gets here. And, uh, of course the market opens and here, I'm going to change this. I'm going to open this volume bar up a little bit and let's say, uh, there we are right there. We're trading right there. Uh, I've heard people say, well, isn't that low volume? No, that's not low volume. Who cares about what it's doing at 9 o'clock in the morning or 10 o'clock in the morning? Uh, I, I mean, there may be a specific reason you're looking for that, but I think for this case, um, it, the, the, that reason is not right. Uh, so um, let it finish because you know what? Every one of those candles started out relatively small as well. Um, <laughs> I forgot what that is, John. I <laughs> 
Um, uh, every one of them. So it's not today's, you know, little first half hour candle I'm looking at. It's, it's everything backwards. And as long as that fits the criteria, then I look at that as a trade. Uh, so I just want to make sure that that's pointed. I think that's a, a I, I think it's something we should talk about. So, um, so anyway, um, let's see, I have Duncan on here. I don't know why I have Duncan on here. Uh, oh, here we are. All right. So, um, uh, daily J hook, I, th oh, that, that's where I'm, that's what that line right there is for. So, uh, let me move this over if I can. There we are. So here, let me draw this J hook out. Um, we'll start from right here. So here, here's the J hook scenario. There, there's the J hook right there. Uh, I put this right in here. I, I want to look at the weekly now. Uh, weekly. There we go. If you look at that weekly, look at that morning star. So I'm just, the reason I want to point this out is when you see daily charts that you like, or even some that are not so good looking, but, but they may be, you can see the chart pattern, uh, you know, a, a pennant, maybe a symmetrical triangle, something like that. You can see it's there, but it's jagged and, and it just, man, that looks ugly. I can see it, but it looks ugly. Well, what you want to do is go to that two day chart, three day, uh, five day chart. And all of a sudden it'll become clear and you will likely see a candle pattern that you can grab a hold of. Most people, I think, recognize the top uh, 15 or so candlesticks. And really that's all you need to know. You don't need to know any of that other stuff. Um, and most people know that and you know how it's easy to teach somebody how you trade, say, the morning star signal or how you trade the bullish engulf or how you trade a piercing candle, uh, the bull kicker, the bell toll. It is really easy to train somebody what to do because for the most part, that is in a way mechanical. You have a you have a slight little idea maybe where that entry or exit should be. And from there, you can tune it up how you, you might like. Uh, but uh, but uh, if you move to that longer time frame, you'll see that. And when you see that, then, I mean, for me, uh, the morning star signal above that candle right here, if we, if we call this candle number one, let's do that real quick. Uh, pin blue. Uh, we'll call this uh, number one right here, right there. And then we're going to call this candle number two right there. And then we'll call this candle number three right there. And my idea of a perfect morning star, which is probably nothing you'll ever see in a book. Uh, well, maybe somebody will do it, but uh, is I like to see a negative day. That, that, that is not an absolute thing, what I look at, but I like to see number one is a negative day. Number two, I really could care less what this candle looks like as long as it closes below the open of candle number one. All right. I don't care what this looks like. This could be a hammer. This could, this could be whatever you want. It could, it could, it could, it could look like this right here. It could it, it, that could be the candle. I, I don't care. That is not important. Remember, what we're learning to do is what are the candlesticks really telling us? You know, stop looking at the basic book. Uh, that's, not a, that's not a morning star. No, no, that's not a morning star. Uh-uh. What do you mean it's not? All a morning star is, it's a candle that has a body here or a top, if you want to use the tops, and it has a candle that's lower than this one, and then this candle is higher than this one. That's all it is. The shapes and sizes of them mean very, very little in the long run. Very little. It's what it's trying to tell you is, is the key. Okay, so with that said, let's get rid of that. So my idea is I want to, uh, my, I, I like the negative candle. I like the close to be lower than the open. This candle here, I just want it to close below that line, below that open. And this candle here becomes a buy when it crosses 
whoops, not what I wanted. Go back. When it crosses over that body right there, that now becomes a bite of me. Stop-wise, I would come down here and put my stop somewhere around that low candle. If, if sometimes there's the distance from, I mean, in a, I would like to say that pivot low is the perfect place for a stop. It's not always the perfect place. And here's a case where it might not be the perfect place. And that is the distance from here to this area here. What if it was, oops, wrong color. Can't see that. There we are. What if it was 10, no, let's get crazy. Let's get crazy. 15%. Uh, what if, what if that distance between here and here was 15%? Well, your trading career is going to be pretty darn short if you don't, if, if, you, if that's the kind of stops you work with. Pretty darn short because you're not going to make those profits. So, and I'm looking at a stock trade here, okay? A stock trade, not an option trade. I'm looking at stock trades. So, if that's 15%, I can't hardly use that stop. I may like the chart. I may be determined to buy the chart. I may have humpteen reasons why I need to be in this chart. But I don't need that stop right there. So what I may do is change that stop. I may come down here and use the top of that candle. And I'm just guessing, but I probably cut 3 or 4% off that. That still seems kind of high. Well, if I bought this here and it popped up to this candle right there, more than likely, I would now set my stop in that area where we broke out, maybe a few pennies below. So, because I, if, if, there's a big, if there's a big percentage move, you can't just arbitrarily use the pivot low. So, you know, so when looking at a chart and setting your stop, you also have to take into account how much can you afford to lose? And 15% might not be what you can afford to lose. And the only way you can afford to lose 15% uh, is if you're making a whole lot more than 15%. How come that looks? Huh, I don't know how to move this over. Oh well, I'm not gonna fight it. I don't think. Oh. Oh, maybe this is what it is. There it is. <laughs> I'm a little slow. Okay, let's see, what did, uh, <laughs> that's true, JQ, that's true. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm not sure what any time frame is, uh, I'm not sure what that's for, and I will go take a look at, and, it, and if anyone has any charts you want to look at, let's spend a few minutes uh, doing that, please, D DK Duncan. There we are. <clears throat> okay, I we just looked at that. I'm not sure what you're pointing out, Duncan. For uh, let's see. In short, don't get hung up on the on the textbook perfect candlestick signal. Yes, sir. Uh, just look at the psychology behind it. Yes, sir. That is so correct. Yeah, don't look at that textbook. And again, I please understand, I am not trying to diminish any of the textbooks. I'm not trying to belittle them. I'm not trying to make them any smaller. Uh, I have nearly every one that's been printed. <laughs> <coughs> and every single one of them are good. Uh, every single one are good. And uh, I, learned, I have learned and still learn from those. I still look at those books. That's my favorite reading material. Uh, it's just that, uh, just like uh, Tex there is saying, uh, is, is trading is not textbook. Uh, trading is more psychological. Uh, so just what is the candlestick and candlestick pattern telling you? And what, um, what makes a, a uh, candlestick? In fact, here I've done all this and I have a couple more questions 
And let's find a chart to work with. Oh, no, let's don't use Intel. LB. No, 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 Fossil. We'll, we'll, use, we'll use Fossil. That remains a pretty good one to look at here. So here is uh, the second question. What is follow through? You hear the term follow through. Again, this is my own personal opinion. Uh, I don't think this is necessarily what everyone else uh, that studies candlesticks uh, believe, but it is what I believe. And uh, it works for me. And um, uh, I can prove it. So <laughs> we'll just go with that, I guess. Uh, so what is follow? Follow through is when um, price action moves higher than the candle clue. So here's an example. Um, psh, let me try to find. Oh, oh, there it is right there. That's perfect. That's perfect right there. So here's fossil in a downtrend. This is the candle clue. It's a bullish engulf, right? So what we, we, we look at bullish engulfs as that re a reversal type candle. But let's think of it as a clue. It's a reversal clue. It's not a reversal candle. I know that is totally different from what everybody in the world talks about on a candlestick signal. But I think if we take it out of the textbook and if we look at it like text says there, then you'll, you'll see what I'm trying to say here. If this is the clue, then follow through is a close above the clue. That's the clue. There's the answer. There's the clue. There's the answer. Now it becomes tradable. What is positive trading? Because that's different. What is follow through? Follow through is follow through of the clue. Follow through of the clue. Positive trading is the clue, box that clue in, the clue candle, the bullish engulf in this case, box that in, positive is trading is anything above that low. 99.9% .9 of the time, there are those cases where maybe, maybe that low is too low. But that's positive trading. The candles inside this area here are supporting are supporting the clue candle and if we get down here and test that again like that that is still supporting the clue candle where does the clue candle lose support well when we go below the, the clue candle this right here is normal price action can be normal price action so anything in here is supporting the clue. When we have the breakout, let's say we get down into here, we start moving up, it starts moving up. When does this become, when does the follow through happening of the clue candle? Well, when it breaks out, when it moves above the clue candle, and that's that first candle. Now see, we have the clue candle here, and on this bar, we have the follow through. We have the follow through. So we have that trading. We never, we, we didn't create positive trading to the clue. We created follow through right away on the next candle. Keep in mind, this is a three day chart as well. Uh, could I look at Gogo? Absolutely. So Gogo. Gogo has been on our watch list and a lot of our members are actually in Gogo and trading Gogo. Uh, and uh, here's the daily chart. So I'm kind of guessing that Alan there is asking uh, because of this reason. We have a bearish engulf, which is generally not good. Uh, doesn't mean it's going to be bad for, you know, 100 days. It might only be bad for a day. Who knows? Um, with a doji sitting here. Uh, so candlestick signals, candlestick signals are short-term indicators. They are not long-term indicators. 
Nowhere on a chart did some candlestick cause the chart to go from, uh, let me, I'm going to be a little, try to be ridiculous here. You know, uh, here, here's a downtrend and there's your bullish engulf, boom. And, you know, six months later, the chart is, is uh, trading up here, you know, it, it, it's trading up here. That candle did not cause this chart to go there. It did not do that. Candlesticks are extremely short term, extremely short term. They are perfect for the swing trader. They are just killer for the swing trader. They're dynamite for the intraday day trader because the intraday is exactly the same as daily. But that candle did not cause that stock to go up there. What caused that stock to go up this high was buyers thinking the stock is worth it, not that candle. That candle, there was something on that candle, the, some news event, something that changed the attitude. But again, it did not bring that stock up here. So when I look at this, I'm looking at this candle here. In my mind, this is short term. And what I want to do is draw a trend line on there. And are we in that trend line? We are. I'm going to go to this chart right here because this is a chart I, I look at with the T-line bands. And I'm going to get rid of everything. And that's my, what I use is a trend, all three of those. And the trend is up right now. And for me, below that red line is what I would look at. And I wouldn't be just arbitrarily, willy-nilly below that red line. What it would be is, okay, below that red line, but take a look at price action. Always take a look at price action. So, okay, I'm below the red line, but let's look at price action. There's a couple of tops right there, a couple of tops, touch right there. You know what? I like that, but I like it a little lower. I'm going to go a little lower because I'm going to give it a little bit of room. So I'm going to come down to these two candles, give it a little bit of room. There you go. So I'm looking at this chart, and if we get below 560, I would be very unhappy with it and probably would not want the chart. Until we get there, this is just putting in a chart pattern. Let's, let's take this out to a little longer term. Let's go look at this two-day chart. And for those that are in the trading room and that hang with us, you know that this is setting up as a pop out of the box. And do you see any sell signal there? Anything? I don't. Nothing. Three-day chart, look what we have here. Just more of that pop out of the box. We have a bullish, uh, uh, there's a doji uh, bullish candle up little flag here, morning star here. I mean, so far this chart still looks great. Uh, what was this? Three day, let's go right to a weekly chart. Here's a weekly chart looking a little bit more negative, just that candle alone, but we have not broken down through support. And you can see where my support line is. We have not broken down. So would I be a buyer today on this or would have? No, no, I would not have been a buyer today. But then I don't buy, uh, generally buy dojis either. And I don't generally buy uh, negative like that. We do have what could be a doji continuation pattern to the downside. Again, I think we need a tad more information. But until we get below that 560, it's just making a lot of noise in here right now. Anyway, that's my two cents on it, Alan. MKC, I think we peaked at that today. Yeah, Morningstar. Uh, recent morning star and follow through uh, higher today. Yes, that is a, that is a nice looking morning star. By the way, negative day uh, down and back up. Look at that right there. And this is what I mean by uh, candlesticks are short term in nature. And so here's a shooting star. Oh my gosh! Woo! <laughs> How many people have seen uh, someone show you a chart with a shooting star, uh, and then? You know, this happened three weeks ago, and they show you how the chart has just caved in. <laughs> very few charts are actually like that. Very few. There, there are some, but very few. All we did was say, all Price did was say is, okay, I need a rest. I've been going up for quite some time. 
wouldn't you say? I've been going up quite some time. I need a little rest. So it's resting. That's all it's doing. It pulls back. Do you know that when charts go up, they become more dangerous? When charts go up, smart money, they're taking their money away. And it's still moving up. Smart money is pulling money out. And before you know it, the stock is up there and it realizes, holy crap, I've got no money. Boom, down it goes. That's what happens. And you know what? It finds support. It finds new buyers. And it starts that process all over again. It, it just, it, it's like clockwork. Up we go. Holy moly, everyone's taking their money. Back down to support. Smart money starts coming in. And we start this whole process all over again. All over again. Anyway, nice chart there. Nice find on that one. I'm going to uh, write that down. Thank you. MCK, MKC. There we go. Uh, let's see, a couple more and then we're going to call it a night. Um, AES, what do I think? Um, AES is set up, I like it a lot. Um, yeah, I, I like it a, a lot. I think what it did today was good. I like the area that it did it. Uh, we have uh, touch, 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 support. Uh, I can't help noticing that right there. I can't help noticing that. So here's your clue. And what would we want to see for follow through? Well, I don't, I don't like this. I don't like this top. So I don't want a failure here. So what would follow through be? Follow through might be break out over that 1490 and then look for that entry on some consolidation and i think you're you're very likely to get it so that's that that would be my two cents on that chart get get above that level you have follow through of the clue candle and now we have game on let's see uh kimberly we should be paying more attention to price action trend line and support and resistance more powerful Yes, Kimberly, absolutely. Uh, one of the best charts in the world is this one right here. It's the naked chart. Doug talks about it all the time. Uh, Doug is the king on naked, naked charts uh, following price action. There's just no one any better than that than Doug. And, and uh, if, if you just follow the trend, if you just follow price action, if you respect the fact that you are going to be wrong, then... You are way ahead of the game. But what happens is, you know, big bullish candle, we're on support. Um, it starts doing this right here. You know, it start, it, it comes down, it does this. Well, we can't be wrong. It's impossible for us to be wrong. 4,200 people said this was a good chart. Mr. Kramer said this was a good chart. Warren Buffett bought this chart, you know. It, I can't be wrong. I can't possibly be wrong. And yeah, you can be wrong. So as long as we respect the fact that we can be wrong and when it happens, we deal with it rather than, well, rather than hoping. As long as we deal with it, then price action, support and resistance, the trend, cat's meow. Winning combination, cherry pie. Um... Let's see, Rick. Uh, sorry. Oh, no worries. Uh, oh, you were interrupted. That's all right. <laughs> did did you happen to go over? No, nope, we'll do that one. And again, we're going to call it a night here real quick. Uh, in fact, after Kimberly there, we're going to call it a night. Um, so let's see. What was your question? Uh, no, I didn't go over it. But, you know, for the most part, I like the chart. Um So far, we have a nice little rounded bottom right in here. Uh, I like that. Let's go look at the weekly chart. Look at that. I would call that a pop out of the box right in there. Uh, man, this thing starts to rock. That's, this is a nice chart. In fact, I'm going to... Huh. Uh, let's do this. I'm going to go right there. 
Yeah. I'll call that good myself. So over 630, this becomes a bullish chart. And for some folks, it might not be, it might not be viable till we clear this high right in here. So very nice chart. I like over 630 and I like over 660 as well. Uh, super chart, super chart. Thank you for that. Um, uh, thanks, Kimberly. This is going to, oh, thank you very much, Kimberly. In fact, the video, you'll have the video uh, tomorrow on the website and we'll try to have it also on the YouTube page. Remember, go to the YouTube page if you like it. Thumbs up. If you want to make a comment, make a comment. You Once you make a comment, you're automatically entered into next month, and we'll do the same thing. I'll give some memberships away uh, next month as well. So uh, make sure you leave that. Remember that Doug Campbell, uh, Steve Risner, and I, we all have three separate YouTubes if you want to check them out. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Congratulations to those winners. I mean, thumbs up. That was pretty pumped doing that. You guys have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow.